Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm so happy you're here. My name is Hannah and on this channel I post a lot of anti-MLM content. I'll link a playlist here and down below. This is my big anti-MLM playlist. This is my 99th video on that playlist, so if any of that kind of content does sound interesting to you, I would love it if you would consider subscribing, consider liking this video. All those things really help to support my channel and I appreciate you so much for doing that. For today's video, I am bringing you another MLM horror stories. These are your own personal experiences that you have emailed to me. I pick out a few, I read them for a video, we react to them and discuss them together. But before we get into the video, I have one thing I want to address. This is probably going to take me a few minutes to explain and it is a little bit of a downer. So if you're not prepared for that or you're not into that, go ahead and skip forward to the first story. I'll put where you can skip in the time bar. But it has come to my attention since I posted Horror Stories 28, the last Horror Stories video I did, that people may be under the impression that one of the stories I read was fake fabricated, made up. I got somewhere in the ballpark of like 10 to 15 comments saying something along the lines of like, this can't be real. This sounds like a Reddit post. This sounds fake, something like that. Which quite frankly, comments like that make me feel sick. If the story is true, I feel sick at the idea that people would be doubting it and therefore invalidating that person's experience. That's not what my videos are here for. This is supposed to be an empowering and uplifting space. But on the other hand, if it is a made up story, then I feel sick for having unintentionally spread false information on my channel. It's a double-edged sword. Nobody wins here. And I can honestly say that it was not until I posted the video and I went back to look at the comments a few days later that it even crossed my mind that it could be a fake story. Maybe that makes me naive. Maybe I'm too quick to give people the benefit of the doubt and just trust that what they're telling me is true. But that's kind of the thin ice that we walk on with this kind of video, right? I have over 500 horror stories in my inbox. I want so badly to believe that people would do the right thing and not tarnish the credibility of these videos and of the mission of my channel by sending in a fake story, but how hard would it really be to make up a fake email, send in a fake story? Anyone can do it. It's so easy. And there really is no foolproof way for me to know the difference. I am not here for clickbait. We cannot be having me making the thumbnail of my video on this one topic of this one story to get people to click on it and then they're watching it and being like, that seems like a fake story. I cannot be having people believing that the information I'm giving them is not factual. It's kind of to a point where like my credibility is on the line here. The mission statement of my channel is on the line here. So when I get several comments of people being like, that seems made up, I have to take it very seriously. So here's what I did and here's what I'm gonna do moving forward. I reached out to the writer of that story in a very awkward and uncomfortable way to describe the situation to her and basically have have to ask her point blank, was your story made up? She admitted to being slightly offended, rightfully so, and she said, quote, no, it's not a fake story, I wish it was. Then she went on to provide me with a bunch of additional details about the car crash she was in, as well as a photo of her son in the hospital after the car crash, which I am not going to share out of respect for her in this video. But based on the details she gave me and the conversation we have, I am led to believe that her story was true. And I kind of hate that I have to have this lens of skepticism. I hate the idea of reaching out to somebody and being like, were you lying to me? It makes me sick. But as my channel grows, as these videos become more frequent, with the more stories I get, I've learned through this experience that perhaps fake stories are inevitable to a degree. And it is my responsibility to do the best I can to vet out those stories, to uphold the integrity of these videos and to provide you with the most accurate and valuable information possible. That's my job, that's my responsibility and that's my commitment to you. So from this point forward, I will be vetting these stories a little bit more critically. Until this point, I go through, I pick a few at random and I read them for a video. But I feel like going forward, I do have to be a little bit more selective. I don't plan to pre-read them all the way through, but I am gonna scan through them more intentionally to do my best to determine credibility and validity, which I acknowledge is a completely imperfect and subjective thing to do. But I need to put the integrity of these videos above all else. And I will not be including stories that are just out of the this 
world insane, seemingly impossible, unless the writer can provide me with concrete evidence that that story and that experience is true. I realize this entire section is such a downer. I hope that you can see where I'm coming from, but I guess a positive of me having to be more selective in my stories is that I can be more intentional about sharing different stories that cover a variety of companies, a variety of topics, a variety of discussion points to make the videos as dynamic and interesting as possible. And again, I want to reiterate that I never want to assume the worst. I never want to assume that someone is lying to me and I never want to invalidate anybody's experiences. All I'm saying is that this has kind of been a learning experience for me that has opened my eyes to the possibility of getting fake stories in the future. And I'm acknowledging my responsibility in taking action now to hopefully mitigate that and provide my viewers with the most accurate and valuable content possible. This is my job. I'm very passionate about it and I take it very seriously. So that's all I'm going to say on that. Thank you for hanging with me through that little tangent. If you're still here, I have pre-selected a few stories for this video and this one seems to be a little bit lighthearted. So let's start off with this one. This story says, hello, Hannah. When it is said that MLM Huns will prey on anyone, it is true. I'll try to make it short. I stumbled onto your channel not that long ago and I've been obsessed with it. I've had my fair share of run-ins with MLMs due to family, but who would have thought it would happen again? I'm a first time mom with twins and also a stay at home mom. My hubby works full time and the only other adult I talk to is my mom. I heard about this app called Peanut that is kind of like Tinder for moms. You're kidding. I've never heard of that, but that's kind of genius. But wait, we're talking about a horror story here, so it probably doesn't end up well. You swipe on profiles. If you match, you guys message each other, all that fun stuff. I've never met anyone off the app because you know, human trafficking and all that. Very scared for my kiddos. That is true. Anywho, I saw a post that some moms were going to meet up at a local restaurant. No kids, just women. Cool. I'm in. As I'm getting ready, I'm watching your Monate reunion video from a couple days ago. You're doing your thing, breaking down these trips and how a couple of girls got stuck paying for their tickets and so on and so forth. Then when I'm walking out of my house, I get this feeling like this better not be an MLM pitch. But I had curled my hair and my eyelashes and I was going to have a Coke and whiskey no matter what. <laughs> I get to the restaurant and I text my friend out of state and I tell her I'm trying to meet other moms and make friends. I really hope this isn't an MLM pitch. I walk into the restaurant. I'm waved down by three women. They look chill. We'll call them Anna, Elsa, and Olaf. <laughs> Great, let's do it. From now on, new rule. If you wanna keep people anonymous in your story, it is a requirement you name them after Disney characters, please and thank you. I'm kidding, of course, but Anna, Elsa, and Olaf made my day. I order my drink. Five minutes into the conversation, Anna casually says to Elsa, girl, no, remember, we're gonna go on our trip. I think to myself, bish, I knew it. My first reaction was going to be like, oh, you're with Monate, but I did not wanna be confrontational and I figured I'd chill. Maybe they were weren't going to be pushy. Fortunately for everyone involved, they were not pushy, but continued to sprinkle their business into the conversation. Olaf was not in the biz. They talked about how they had so much time for their kids. I rebutted with that I'm a stay at home mom, so I'm good. They talked about extra income. I said that I owned rental properties, so I didn't need it. They talked about how they loved it, how the company had a sense of community and they wanted each other to win. That statement dissolved very fast when Elsa was showing me her business card and then Anna pulls hers out and says, yours are matte and mine are gloss. She then handed it to me to feel the satin gloss. When I asked Anna if I could keep her business card and she said yes, Elsa's face said it all. She was pissed. I'm assuming it's because she felt that Anna was encroaching on her guest potential downline. They continued to talk about earning the trips to Las Vegas, Bahamas, and other places. They said that it was an all expense paid vacation. I knew it was a lie because I had just watched your Monet video before leaving the house. I'm not sure if she also didn't read the fine print because she came off genuinely excited. Anna, they pay for your airfare. In my head, not flying frontier. Anna, they pay for your room. In my head, I have a timeshare with resorts everywhere. Anna, they pay for your transportation. In my head, no they don't. Anna, they pay for your food, even room service. In my head, that's not what Hannah said. <laughs> I 
love this so much. They do not pay for your food and they do not pay for your room service, come on. It's literally in the terms and conditions, your food is not covered. They gave me samples of a hair mask, a face scrub, and some other stuff. They had me try on some lotion at the table. They asked me what shampoo I used. When I told them, Anna said that they have better products and that they go by UK ingredient standards, not US standards. I'm sitting here thinking that Monate has open lawsuits. I even thought about bringing it up, but again, I didn't want to upset anyone. And I was doing a great job of moving the conversation away from Monate every time they brought it up. What I observed during this dinner was two women who were trying to make money. Anna seemed desperate and Elsa seemed like she had gotten duped or told that this was gonna be something different. I actually felt bad for Elsa. When I realized that it was an MLM pitch, I chose not to get anything to eat so that I could dip out fast. And also because from watching your videos, I know that they are not really bawling as they claim. Olaf, on the other hand, took all the leftover appetizers and ordered a fat, juicy steak. She was not in Monate, and from the little bit that she did talk, she seemed to be down on her luck. I'm thinking that's why she was a good candidate to pitch to. So I'm not judging her for taking the food, I'm just a little jealous because that steak looked delicious. The rep said that they would pay for dinner, they would split it. Elsa was worried about how much money they were going to charge her card. Then they started talking about how their card always gets flagged for suspicious activity. I asked what bank it was, and in a braggy tone, they answered, oh no, it's our company card. Because of your videos, I know that it's a prepaid card. And that's why Elsa wanted to know how much she would be charged. So this is true. They do have a card. It says Mo Money on it. And it's an option for you if you want to. You don't have to do it this way. You can get this card and have all of your paychecks just preloaded onto it. So rather than having them transferred to a bank, they just go directly onto this card. I've brought this up in other videos and I've wondered in the past, like what's the benefit of having that card? And honestly, in my opinion, the only thing I can think of as to why somebody would have a Mo Money card instead of just having it loaded onto their debit card or to their bank account is for instances exactly like this so that they can whip out their card and be like, Monate is paying for dinner tonight. Monate's paying for my gas. Monate paid for my groceries. And they can essentially use it as a bragging right or as a conversation starter or something along those lines. So no shame whatsoever for balling on a budget and for wanting to kind of know like, hey, how much is this gonna cost before I get the bill? But it's interesting in this context because it is a prepaid card. The only money that she has on that card is what she's gotten from her Monate paychecks. So it kind of makes you look at the situation through a different lens. Like does Monate pay you enough to cover a dinner out? Is that what we're talking about here? Like, is that what you're concerned about? So that's kind of interesting. I offered to leave the tip because of my drink. And while we were getting ready to leave, I thought I just have to make it to my car without buying a pity product. When the server came back, Elsa's card was declined. She was so embarrassed and called the number on the back of the card to lift the hold. I felt horrible for her. Whether she had money or not, it's always embarrassing when a card doesn't go through. Been there, done that, it is definitely embarrassing. I felt bad leaving her there, but I had to leave without giving any more of my info. Honestly, if it hadn't been an MLM pitch, I think I could have been friends with these ladies, but I cannot trust that their friendship would be genuine since I know that they're in need of a downline or a customer. I just wanted a mom friend to talk to and have play dates for my kids and they were looking for something else. Sorry this is long, but I tried to only give the highlights. Thank you so much for all the effort you put into your videos. They're great and my newest obsession. Keep up the good work. I think the most ironic part of the whole story is that you were watching anti amelin videos about Monate right before this instance. And personally, I love hearing that because you are confirming to me that my videos are doing their job. And that is to educate on the nitty gritty details, specifically of these free trips, how there's all these caveats and how things aren't fully paid for. And had you not known that, had you not equipped yourself with that information before going to dinner with them, who knows, maybe that would have been really convincing. Maybe that would have opened the door a little bit wider to you potentially joining Monate. And that's what I think is so cool and so fulfilling about these videos is that yes, I hope they're entertaining, but on the other hand, I hope you can learn something that you can take out there with you to arm yourself, equip yourself against MLM pitches and be able to recognize the misinformation in the moment. That is fantastic. Thank you so much for sending this in. This next story says, hi, Hannah, I would please like to remain anonymous. Trigger warning, this email includes topics of depression and self 
This is both an MLM horror story and an MLM fails video, but it's very important they go together. I know this is long, but I really hope it can help someone. I've been very interested in anti-MLM content for the past year or so, and just recently found your channel. I love how you show such kindness and do not personally attack people in the videos. I've had several experiences with MLMs, honestly too much to write in just one email, but I wanted to share one that is extremely important and dangerous. To give you some backstory, I have struggled with depression for most of my life. Even after several self instances as a teenager, my parents never sought help for me due to their religious beliefs. Fast forward to my 20s, I continued to suffer alone thinking I was the problem and I just had to have a better attitude. I struggled to function, but I was still unable to ask for help. If it wasn't for having my children and wanting to live for them, I probably would not be here today. I promise this will all be important. Fast forward again to my 30s and I figured out how to cope and highly function, though I was still suffering in my own mind. I began talk therapy and religious deconstruction instruction in my late 20s. They suggested I get on antidepressants, but for some reason it scared me and I stopped going to therapy. I finally hit a breaking point in 2021 and went back to therapy. Again, the therapist suggested antidepressants. At this point, I was still unable to admit that I was depressed. So I went to another therapist. They also suggested antidepressants. I figured it was because these doctors were making a kickback from the medications. So I tried online therapy at BetterHelp, purposefully knowing that they could not write prescriptions. After one session with that therapist, he suggested I talk to my primary care doctor for antidepressants. After all that confirmation, I felt relief. It wasn't me. I wasn't crazy. I wasn't an awful human. I had a chemical imbalance. So I started on antidepressants. If you're not familiar, being on antidepressants the first few weeks and months can be hard. Your body is working to balance and get used to the medication and there can be side effects. I had migraines for a full week. I was extremely tired and very emotional. During this time of getting used to my medication, one of my closest friends who is in an MLM, Arbon, posted the video attached to her stories. And then you link something that you sent me on Google Drive. This is a five minute video of your friend who is in Arbon posting this on her Instagram. I have not watched through this, so let's watch it. Okay, so the first slide of her story says, who suffers from anxiety and depression? And then she puts a poll that says, ew, me, or nope. The next slide says, I have some really interesting information for you with a poll that says, tell me versus don't care. Long story short, I had two mini panic attacks a couple months ago. I thought to myself, oh, hell no, I don't have time for this. I'll call a doctor. Obviously they prescribed me drugs. Me being the person I am, researched a bunch before I decided to take any of these drugs. And the information I found was absolutely freaking shocking. My first red flag, the medication was free. Nothing is freaking free anymore, so why would they be happily giving me complex drugs for free? And the drugs they recommended were classified as an SSRI. Then she posts this about how SSRIs work. It says, SSRIs treat depression by increasing levels of serotonin in the brain. Serotonin is one of the chemical messengers that carry signals between the brain nerve cells. They block the reabsorption of serotonin into neurons. This makes more serotonin available to improve transmission of messages between neurons. SSRIs are called selective because they mainly affect serotonin, not other neurotransmitters. Oh, okay, so you want me to take a drug that's gonna trick my brain into thinking that I'm happy for the rest of my life, and then what it's gonna do is it's gonna disrupt the way that my stomach functions, and that's what keeps my body happy and healthy and functioning. No. What? Come on, no. Then she's rolling her eyes that says our healthcare system is a joke. Would you guys be interested in me doing a series on all of this information that I found, like anxiety, depression, what causes it, the medications that are out there for, what those medications do to you, and how to naturally fix it um, and get out of your depressive anxiety funk without having to take medication because I am so heated right now about the information that's on the internet and how just freaking wrong it is like i am i'm i am not happy about it like i'm getting stressed out thinking about it like i'm like be better like is that seriously all that you guys are going to recommend me oh let me just fake you into being happy for the rest of your life when there are so many other ways that you could do it with food exercise sunlight like like supplements like what 
I just have to pause it right there because the shaming of mental health treatments is not sitting right with me. Things like anxiety and depression are very, very intersectional, okay? So many things contribute to them. It's a combination of a lot of things, but one of the biggest things is a chemical imbalance in your brain. Is that always the case? No, but that is a huge contributing factor for a lot of people that do struggle with prolonged depression. And as always, I am not a professional. Take everything I say with a grain of salt. Please talk to a healthcare professional but it's of my understanding that when you do have something like a chemical imbalance within your brain, things like exercising or eating a little bit more vegetables or taking some vitamin supplements, those little things may help, but they are not going to be the cure all. And it feels really dismissive from her to be like, you don't need this medication to fake yourself into being happy. All you need is Arbon, which she's not explicitly saying, but she did throw it in there that taking supplements and taking care of your yourself is going to be the cure to depression and anxiety. Is mental health medication a good solution for everybody? No, it's not. But is it life-saving for some people? Absolutely. Everything in this discussion of mental health is obviously a spectrum. Some people are affected more or less in different ways and people need different levels of support. And this entire story so far is really insensitive, really dismissive. And as within the context of MLM companies and the fact that she is a rep for Arbonne, we can only assume that that plays into what she's saying right now and that she's trying to insinuate that if you are struggling with depression or anxiety, don't go to professionals, don't be prescribed medication, just try Arbonne instead. And that is the most messed up part of all of this. So the main reason I called a doctor is to figure out what medications they're going to prescribe so I could figure out what those medications do to change the chemical compound of your brain and I could figure out how to do that as naturally as possible. So no, I wasn't planning on taking pills to know what their prescription was so I could figure out what to change in my brain to fix it. There you go. Hi guys, so it's been a minute since I have talked about gut health and mental health and how they correlate. So here we go. Here's the Arbon pitch. Buckle up. I can smell it coming a mile away. Here we are. If you guys missed it, I went on a little bit of a tangent there a couple weeks ago. I have not had time to put any of the information that I put together because I'm just a really busy person. So there's that. But I, a lot of you guys from the information that I posted, you guys blew my Instagram up. There were so many people that messaged me so much information that you guys have learned and experienced from a either taking the, um, antidepressants and anti-anxiety medications that most doctors prescribe and how terrible it affected your body and how you are trying to recover from all of it. And then there is B, the people who try to um, fix it holistically and naturally like I am trying to do. So I have been on some supplements for about four. So uh, about some of the supplements I take, one's like a gut health, so pre-probiotics, the digestive enzyme, it helps your body process all the, the food that you're giving it, whether it's good or bad. And uh, B12, there are some cookies. Tin. There's um, lots of other just like minerals and those are just the main ones I can think of um, but lots of other minerals and vitamins that help your stomach um, process things faster quicker easier and it helps e detox kind of what is going on in your stomach and rebalance all the bacteria in it so and when you do that everything else just kind of like falls into place so I've been consistent with that and then another thing that I've been consistent with is or trying to be consistent with is vitamin D so my vitamin D levels were at a seven. They're supposed to be in the 20s. So look up vitamin D deficiency and what it does to your body and all of this will start making sense. So I can say that all of my issues I feel like started there uh, with my low vitamin D levels. I was exhausted. I couldn't do anything. I couldn't function. I was so tired. Um, once I got that under control and I rebalanced my hormones a little bit, I was able to focus on the foods that I was eating that helped heal my gut, which helped in return, fix the, the mental stuff. So I took supplements to quote, fix the mental stuff. Again, I already said it, it's a spectrum. Yes, these things may help you, but they are not a replacement for antidepressants if that is what you truly need. And that is what healthcare providers on multiple occasions have determined to be true for you in your situation. Listening to your Arbon Hun friend on Instagram is not your primary source for mental health care. This is dangerous because she's trying to sell you something. That is the motivation for these stories 
series right now. She's not doing this under the direction of a professional. She is an Arbonne rep who signed up for a pyramid scheme and is now trying to prescribe people supplements when she has no way of knowing if that is the most appropriate course of action for the individuals watching this story. Infuriating, it's really upsetting. It's been a journey, um, but I would say that all of this all led back to a vitamin slash mineral deficiency, which caused a slew of other problems. And now I'm trying to get back to where I was before all of this started happening. So yes, um, all of this can be fixed and can be healed with food because I do believe food is medicine and a few key supplements and minerals that are missing because of the diets and the food that we have readily available, which is mostly shit. So. Uh, if you guys have any farmer's markets or anything like that that you guys like to shop at, please recommend them because um, I'm looking for different grocery stores that have better quality food. Okay, I feel like I've said my piece on that. Let's go back to the story. I understand that in the video, she never says Arbon, but I know her very well and know their products. The gut health she talks about and supplements are all referring to Arbon products. I was already amid the side effects when I saw this story and all I could do was cry. I felt so invalidated in my decision to take antidepressants like I did something wrong, like everyone else had the answer except for me. If it wasn't for my sweet husband telling me to keep pushing and give the meds a chance, I might have quit taking them after seeing her video. And that is the danger of this. That is such an explicit example, an explicit tie between the damaging thing that an MLM rep says and the way that that can impact a person in a vulnerable state. This is the issue at hand. This is why I make the videos I make. This is a huge problem. In hindsight, it makes me angry. Not at my friend in that video. Honestly, she's an awesome, beautiful human being. It makes me angry because I know she got this misinformation from her team. I've been hearing about Arbonne and meeting all her Arbonne friends and uplines for years. Every time they have a team meeting, they talk about health and medical advice that is completely unfounded. I love my friend, but she has a high school diploma and a cosmetology license. She is not a doctor. She has no medical training and just flat out has no idea what she's talking about when it comes to these health claims. The reason I think this full story is so important is because I know there are other people like me out there in all of those different stages of my life from self to barely functioning, or maybe they finally had the courage to ask for help, messages and unfounded claims like in her video could quite literally end somebody's life. It is not okay. It's not just an opinion. It's detrimental to someone's mental health. Today, I am thriving on antidepressants. I got my medication dosage right with my doctor. I have continued talk therapy and I've never felt better. I did not know life could feel this good. I needed a doctor. I needed real help. It took me literal decades to understand and admit those things, and I know I'm not not the only one. I know this was so long, but if you have gotten this far, please, please, please include these amazing resources for your viewers that may also be struggling mentally. Please know you are never alone in your struggle and help is out there. This is fantastic. She's linked six different resources, which I will copy and paste right into the description box of this video. Thank you so much for including those. And honestly, I don't have anything to add because you laid it out so beautifully that this person is not a professional, that it does take professionals to prescribe these kinds of things and that you should not be listening to your friends who are in MLMs on Instagram. I am beyond excited to hear that your meds are working for you, you found a great balance, and that you are thriving these days. That is the best news. Thank you again for sending in this story, and I will link all of these resources below. This story says, Hey Hannah, please don't share my name. It's unique, and I'm about to share a lot of identifying things. I wanted to say before I jump in that I love your content, and I can't wait for some of my loved ones to wake up. Anyway, this is probably going to be a long one and I'm still seething over my recent interaction with a Norwex hun. I've been pretty anti-MLM since I worked in community mental health over five years ago as a mental health therapist. I witnessed several predatory MLMs rope in severely mentally ill people who were on fixed incomes. It was horrifying and as a result, I've been very careful about avoiding these products. Recently, my friend invited me to her place to hang out with other women. I had no idea it was going to be a Norwex party. So I go and just sort of entertain myself by not saying anything 
laughing and internally scoffing at the outrageous claims. During the party, one of the other guests asked how my son is doing. For context, my son has a rare heart defect and needed open heart surgery when he was just four days old. He is six months old now and is doing well. I'm so glad to hear that. So I told her that he is well and doesn't need to be seen by cardiology until he's one, which is very exciting. The Norwex Hun sees this as an opportunity to engage with me because I have not really been engaging with her, like at all. I don't want her crappy overpriced products. I don't want to be rude, especially in front of my friends, so I answer her questions. I'm also a big advocate for sharing this information because one in a hundred babies are born with heart defects and there is little funding. Also, heart defects are the number one cause of infant mortality. My son was born with transposition of the great arteries. Basically, his main arteries are flipped, so he had to have an arterial switch operation when he was four days old. There isn't a known genetic or environmental cause of his condition either. I'm sure you can guess where this leads her. Quote, do you think it's possible that your cleaning products caused this? You know, Norwex wouldn't do that. You know, if you get Norwex now, your next baby won't have these issues. I almost lost my mind. I am losing my mind currently. What is ultimately so messed up about this is that I'm not surprised. That is messed up. This is probably the third, if not fourth time now that I've had a report like this where an MLM hun from a variety of different companies makes some kind of comment about this wouldn't have happened to your child if you used my products. And it doesn't get more disgusting than that. As you previously said in your email, there's not a genetic or environmental cause and heart defects in infants is relatively common. It is so inappropriate to be insinuated that any kind of blame should be placed on the mother for things that are completely out of her control. Disgusting, disgusting behavior. She doesn't know me, but for some reason, she feels this is a great opportunity for her to inform me that if only I was using Norwex, this wouldn't have happened. While I know she just wants a sale, it completely ticked me off. I made an excuse and left as quickly as I could, but seriously, this claim is horrible. She isn't aware, but I struggled with infertility, so I became pretty obsessive when I was trying to conceive. I only use natural non-MLM products and even wore a mask when I cleaned. If it was environmental, I doubt it was my cleaning products. According to all the doctors, there isn't anything I did to cause this. Her tactic could be very damaging and honestly, I'm still angry. Also, if I wanted another child, which I don't because he's my second and I only wanted two, the next child would not have this defect. It is rare and it does not run in families. I guess it was obvious that her comment was in bad taste because she sent me a free cleaning cloth. I don't want it, so I guess I'm gonna toss it. I'm really thankful that I'm a member of a group for parents with this defect because because after I shared my experience, other parents told me they've also heard similar things. Ugh, like, I shouldn't be surprised, but I hate that this is a relatable experience. Parents should not be coming together and being like, oh yeah, that happened to me too. No, it's not acceptable. I hope other parents who hear this kind of thing from predatory MLM business partners don't fall for it. It's in bad taste and could seriously damage someone emotionally. Hope you have a wonderful day and keep up the good work. Give those kitties kisses for me. The last last thing I want to say for this story is that it is not your place, period, PSA for everyone. It is not your place to be shaming and blaming somebody for something that they most likely shame and blame themselves for a hundred times over. You don't think that when you're telling a parent, oh, you should have done something differently, maybe it wouldn't turn out this way. You don't think that parent has already come to that conclusion one million times themselves. You don't think that that person already isn't their own worst critic and hasn't beaten themselves up about this time and time again, wondering what I could have done differently? What did I do wrong? How could I have prevented this outcome? I'm just speaking from personal experience, but that's exactly how I would be. If I was sitting down with a doctor and they were giving me a diagnosis, my first question would be, did I do anything wrong? What could I have done differently? How could I have prevented this? And those are the intrusive thoughts that parents mull over in their head. It's what keeps them up at night. And an MLM rep coming in and being like, oh, do you think your cleaning products cause that? That can be so triggering for somebody. I just feel like it's never acceptable to comment or give unsolicited advice on other children's health conditions, especially when your only motivation is to sell a Norwex cleaning cloth. Good for you for getting out of that situation. And you are 100% justified in feeling offended by that, of being angered by that. It's really unacceptable and I'm sorry that happened to you. This story says, hello, I'm loving your channel so far. I've had a few MLM run-ins, but basically my family is easily roped into MLMs and a few have done some damage 
as in hurt the relationships within my family. During high school and college, my sister got into a lot of MLMs. She sold kitchen stuff, makeup, sex toys, candles, wraps, jewelry, and more, and spent a lot of money purchasing products for this stuff. I think she still has some unused inventory. No doubt she does. She spent more money than she sold, but my parents loved her industriousness. You can look busy without actually being busy, and some people will buy it. I, on the other hand, was seen as less industrious, as I was always being compared to my sister. I just had no desire to go into strangers' homes and try and sell them things they can easily get at a store. As you can imagine, all this did not make for a happy home life. I just wanna commend you on this comment where you say that people can look busy without actually being busy. And that puts so concisely exactly how I feel about MLM reps. And I feel like I've tried to convey that point in previous videos in much more roundabout ways because I've said, what does working mean in an MLM? What is work? Because in my definition, work is something you do to make money. But in an MLM, all that makes you money is selling a product or recruiting somebody. And those two things happen pretty infrequently. So what is all this other extra stuff? It's the parties, it's the Zoom calls, it's the group chats, it's the posting on social media, it's the cold messaging. It's all this other stuff that doesn't make them any money whatsoever, but that's what they consider to be work. You can look busy without actually being busy and some people will buy it. Bingo. Fast forward a decade or so and my parents get into Octavia. It's basically modified paleo, but not free. You spend about $300 or more, it's probably increased since then, for pre-packaged portions of food that you can get for cheaper at the store. For example, Fruit Loops, snack bars, and more. None of this food covers your leans and greens, meaning your vegetables and meat that you have to buy on top of that $300 cost. Octavia is endorsed by some doctor who has written a few books that sellers have to buy, all of which back up the diet by science. To be fair, you can lose a fair amount of weight on the diet, but that's because the diet cheats your body's starvation mode. As in, you are nearly on the cusp of starvation, but not enough to force your body to gain weight. But you can also just lose the same amount of weight on a free diet you can easily Google. And you're discouraged from working out while on the diet. You're discouraged from exercise? I'm no health or fitness professional, but I feel like just in general, even if you have no goals that have anything to do with your body or weight loss. Exercise is just a good habit to have. There's so many other health benefits related to exercise that have nothing to do with your weight. For me, it helps me sleep better. It helps me clear my mind. It just feels good to get up and move around. Like it doesn't have to be anything physique oriented. And so I feel like the fact that this program that's claiming to do wonderful things for your health is also discouraging exercise and activity. I feel like that would go against what any health or fitness professional would recommend. The payment of the diet also gets you a health coach, AKA the person who sells you the diet, who works under whoever sold them the diet, etc., 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 on to infinity to the original diet hawker. That's not the problem though. If you need a coach to help you keep on track, this is probably not too bad. The thing is, the coaches of Octavia are highly toxic. They bully and shame you to stay on the program, which they market as a lifestyle change. If you don't stay on the program 100%, if you don't show results or you decide not to order food, then they will bully you into buying again. They use fat shaming and food policing tactics on vulnerable people who are unfortunately taught by decades of diet industry marketing that you deserve to be punished for eating. The thing is though, the diet is hard to maintain. No crap. <laughs> Nothing that requires you to restrict yourself is sustainable. In my opinion, in my experience, they're claiming that it's a lifestyle change, but there's going to become a breaking point. You restrict a lot of calories and can't eat certain foods. Plus the extreme weight loss can be dangerous. Quite a few people developed enlarged gallbladders and needed emergency surgery. There are also stories of people getting lightheaded and dizzy, having digestive issues, numbness and tingling and more. Plus the plan doesn't teach you how to eat healthy, just how to eat their products. Once you stop the program, you gain the weight back because you don't know how to eat in ways that are good for your specific mindset and bodily needs. And that is fascinating and something I honestly am ashamed that I've never thought about. Because as you've mentioned a couple times in this email already, this is essentially a paleo diet. You don't need to join a company, buy somebody's products, 
pay a fee, any of that to eat paleo. Because as with a lot of diets, it's just a set of guidelines for what you can and cannot eat. Personally, I don't subscribe to any kind of diet. I feel like you should consult a healthcare professional before embarking on anything of that sort. But the point being, you do not need to join Octavia to eat this way. And I love what you're pointing out here that it's not teaching people how to eat. People aren't learning anything about macro or micronutrients or portions. All they're doing is eating prepackaged food and exactly when they decide to leave, it's kind of like, where do I go from here? And I guess the same could be said for other companies that claim to be subscribing to some kind of diet and they sell some kind of prepackaged item like Adkins, Nutrisystem. Those kinds of programs don't empower people to know how to fuel their bodies. And I could imagine that's kind of an added layer for something like Octavia that keeps people in for a little bit longer because they're like, well, it's prepackaged, it's easy, it's quick, I know what to eat. I don't really know what I would do off of this program. Very fast. Fascinating. I did not buy into the program, but that didn't mean I escaped the bullying. I got accused of trying to sabotage my parents' business or trying to make them look bad. They would try to give me unsolicited food and body advice. They are always talking about how bad any food is that isn't Octavia food, including fruit, vegetables, meats, eggs, fish, drinks, etc. They even began to sneak food behind each other's backs because they were afraid of being bullied themselves. That is so unhealthy. On on a physical, emotional, and mental level. I finally laid down a boundary and that we were not allowed to talk about my body or what I could or could not eat ever again. Because they took their health coach status to mean that they had free license to talk about anybody's bodies or eating habits. They would even inter- oh god, I'm reading ahead. They would even interrupt perfect strangers' meals in restaurants to food police and try to hawk their program. Soon, any mention of me had disappeared from my parents' social media accounts because I did not buy the program and also, I'm not thin, so they couldn't use me to show progress results for the program. It went so far that when they had selling parties at the house, I was not supposed to be there. I started avoiding my parents' house altogether. I love my parents, but I don't love that they participate in an MLM that preys on vulnerable people. I also hate that this MLM basically robbed me of my relationship with my parents for a few years because they were always on a call or busy with other coaches. There were no boundaries or business hours. They would often stop talking to you mid-conversation and just walk away to take a call. They'd show up late to family functions to make a sale. They would even interrupt family trips like to theme parks to go back to the car to sell the program. Your time was not your time when you were around them. You were not important in the face of a potential sale. Anyway, I hope this story helps people stay away from predatory diet MLMs. You can lose weight in other ways and in safer ways. Also, weight does not equal health. I am a big girl, but I do lifting and running and can outlift and outrun any of my parents and my sister. I have great cholesterol levels, great blood pressure, and great heart health. Plus, I still have my gallbladder, which I can't say for a lot of people on that program. Stay safe and choose health, not toxicity. Fantastic story. You bring up so many just problematic things in general, but honestly, this has kind of opened up my eyes to Octavia in particular and how damaging this company has the potential to be. I think I'm going to fast track this company on my list of MLM deep dives. I think there is a lot to dig into here that I can't even begin to comment on right now. But with you in your personal experience, it is really heartbreaking to see that that's had an impact on your relationship with your parents, whether that's unsolicited body advice or feeling like you can't be in their house or just not having your quality time respected because they're always on call for whatever kind of potential MLM business move that comes up. Thank you for sharing this story. It gives me a lot to think about and I definitely plan on talking about Octavia in the future. This story says, Hannah, I have had several experiences with MLMs, starting with buying Avon from my grandma. I didn't think anything of it and later bought from everyone selling Pampered Chef. We always went to these fun parties with excellent food and I love kitchen gadgets. Me too, I'm a sucker. I didn't mind supporting my friends and like you've mentioned in a previous video, the products were useful. I was never pressured to become a consultant. I did lose a relationship with my cousin from buying Pampered Chef from another consultant at a different friend's party. How dare I not buy from her? The worst experience experience I had with an MLM was from an oily saint from my church who was involved in Young Living. Oily saint, that's amazing. She was love bombing everyone and inviting them to her house for food and fellowship. She always hugged us when she saw us and smelled like a whole sample of oils. We all thought the others were going and on the day of the party, my friend and I quickly realized that we were the only ones there. We began eating peppermint brownies and lemon water and sat down for the presentation. <laughs> we had no idea what we were in for. It went on for hours 
and we were encouraged to take notes on each oil and what it was used for. She added the word of God throughout. Then to my horror, she revealed that we had already ingested the oils in the refreshments we were served when we arrived. I felt betrayed because I never would have knowingly ingested oils. Neither of us had $170 just to try the oils and buy the starter pack. We were given a free gift for attending the party of lemon oil and lip balm. She assured us that she wasn't pushy and would not make us do anything we did not want to do. We told her we would think about it and left feeling completely drained. Again, unfortunately, a classic example of people being duped into attending an MLM pitch under the assumption that it was gonna be something like a party centered around food and fellowship. Instead, you're showing up, you're eating oils, you're taking notes on oils, and to make matters worse, she's wrapping in faith manipulation throughout the whole thing. I went on vacation a week later and there was a sale for Memorial Day. Wait a minute, you weren't in an MLM but you got to take a vacation? I thought only people in MLMs got vacations. She texted and called me throughout my vacation, pushing the discount for the starter package. This required me to sign up as a brand partner in order to get the deal. Later, I found out she had already gotten to my friend and she had signed up as a brand partner and bought the starter package. She really could not afford it. I was busy sightseeing, so I told her I wanted to try the oils, but I did not want to sell them. She sent me a link to fill out my information. I should have paid more attention, but this was an older Christian woman that I trusted. I knew her entire family and I wanted to be accepted at church. And there is something very important that we don't bring up enough. We do talk about faith manipulation specifically and how MLM reps will manipulate your faith, manipulate your relationship with God to get you in and keep you into an MLM. But we don't talk about this little piece right here where in any kind of organization, in any kind of group of people, especially religious organizations, there is kind of this built-in inherent trust of the people that you're with. Like you said, an older Christian woman that I trusted. It's really easy for people to be like, oh, well, she's a lady from church. She wouldn't lead me astray. Oh, it's my sister. Oh, it's my mom. They're close to me. They wouldn't lead me astray. Oh, it's my best friend. Oh, it's somebody in my chronic illness support group. Oh, it's somebody from mommy and me toddler gym. Like it doesn't really matter what the setting is, but there are lots of instances where there are groups of like-minded people, organizations where you do just kind of trust that those people have your best interest at heart. And faith and religion can play into that, but it doesn't always. And it's important to just remember a person's motive when they are pitching you an MLM, even if it comes across in the most genuine, kind-hearted, well-intentioned way, the motivation is always the same, and that is to recruit, to sell, to make money. It turns out she signed me up for a starter pack with the brand partner discount. After some time passed, she announced on Facebook that she made it to the platinum rank and everyone in the church congratulated her. After she prayed on everyone in our church, she switched churches. I feel so terrible for being in this MLM against my will. I let it expire after the first year and I did not make any more purchases to meet the PV. I left the group chat she added me to and blocked all the people in her upline. I never used all the oils. They're in a box in the basement with the diffuser. After letting my account expire, I never heard from her again. I saw on Facebook that she got her young daughter involved and they flew to the Young Living Conference in Utah from Maryland. Your videos helped me to see the tactics that they used and feel better that I'm not the only one. I appreciate your work and how you are teaching people to avoid getting trapped in an MLM from a fellow cat lover. Yeah, I mean, as your story just went on, she dried up the recruitment pool at her current church, so she went to a new one. After you decided you didn't wanna be involved with the business anymore, you were nothing to her, never heard from her again. And I feel like that goes to prove the previous point that even if they do seem like the most well-meaning person, the motivation behind their actions is the same. And your experience of just wanting to try the oils at a discount, I think that is a common experience. A lot of people are like, well, I like the products, I don't really want to sell them, but if they're being sold through this really good bundle deal in a starter pack, I might as well. And how this feels to me and how it's kind of being framed is that she sold you that starter pack and then she ranked up. And something kind of funny that I'm just now thinking about is that there's two sides to this situation, okay? So MLM income disclosure statements have dismal numbers, like they're terrible. The money that's reported that people at the different ranks make is terrible money, insultingly low. And one of the big rebuttals that MLM reps will have is they'll say, oh, well, these numbers are including everyone in the company, not just the people who are active and working the biz. Their point being that people like you, basically, who buy the starter kit and then never do anything with it, they call those people kitnappers, where they buy it for the discount, they never try to work the business, and therefore they're bringing the average down, and that's why the numbers on the income disclosure 
are so terrible. Okay, so that's one side of it here. Kidnappers are bringing the average down because they're not working the business. Now, on the other hand, would you have done that? Would you have bought the starter pack if she didn't reach out to you on Memorial Day for the sale, hound you for it, send you the link, get your information, sign you up without knowing what you were getting into? I would venture to say probably not. You would not have gone out of your way most likely to do that if she hadn't reached out to you weeks after this party. So my point in saying all of this is one side of the argument is like the kidnappers are bringing our average down, but the other side of it is we're being shady and signing up those kidnappers so that we can hit our volume requirements and rank up. Are there customers who initiate buying a starter pack and don't do anything? Absolutely. But that's not what happened in this situation. So in this kind of weird, funny, roundabout way, the reason that their numbers on their income disclosure are so terrible is a direct result of their own actions of signing people up who have no intention of doing the business and who have made that very clear. I don't really know what I'm trying to say here. That was just kind of an interesting parallel that I've never thought about before. And with that, my friends, that's all the stories that I have for you for this MLM Horror Stories video. If you do have your own story that you would like to send to me, the instructions for how to do that are in the description box. Super easy. You just send me an email, I throw it in a folder, and I choose some for these videos. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you, and I will see you in my next one real soon.